Welcome, guys, to another episode of The Candy Show. I'm your host, Candy. I'm going to tell you what, we have some very special guests in the building. First of all, let me tell you, we are in Indianapolis, Indiana. We are backstage at Clues Memorial Hall. And uh, I'm going to introduce my guests, but I'm also going to let them introduce themselves. So first and foremost... Thank you, Lord, for allowing each and one of us to be here today. That's number one. Make sure that you are logged on and subscribed to the YouTube page, and that is capital C, and the number two, Candy Productions, to Instagram. That's the official Instagram. That's Candy Talk Show. All right, guys, you ready to welcome my guest? Because I am very excited about my guest today. Welcome. Grammy-nominated, legendary, The Manhattans, featuring Mr. Gerald Austin. Thank you. And how are you? Thank you. Hello. Thank you for having us. I'm doing well. Thank you guys once again. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just so honored and I'm a little emotional, so you might see me cry during this. I'm let, just, it, let the tears fall. Okay, come on now yeah. with a deep voice. Mr. Gerald Alston, please let everyone know who you are and um, individually after he's finished, you guys can go ahead and introduce yourselves. Well, I am the lead singer of the Manhattans, and I've been performing with the Manhattans for 53 years, and the group has been together 61. Next I am Troy May. I have been with the group 31 years with this guy here. <laughs> I am Lawrence Weeze Newton, and I am the new kid on the block. I have been here for one year and a thousand days. Oh, my gosh. Well, once again, guys, thank you so much. I know you guys are getting ready to step on the stage. Do you know what we're here today? I know we're right now for the Circle City Classic Weekend. You guys are performing tonight. Tell me a little bit about Mr. Gerald Austin. So, like I said, I'm so honored for you guys to be here. You guys have been in the group and around longer than I have, but not too much longer. Just let you know. I, I, I'm, I'm a 70s baby early 70s baby mm -hmm. so i have grown up and i still listen to your music today mr austin please tell everyone a little bit about the legendary group the manhattans featuring gerald austin the group was established in 1962 and i replaced the late great george smith in 1970 and um george smith was a he was a hell of a singer and He's one singer that I have never heard anybody be able to imitate or sound like. He had his own style. And I, when I joined the group, I was told to be myself, be Gerald, sing how you felt, how, how songs made you feel. And I come from a gospel background, so when I feel a song, I feel it from my heart, and, and I just express it the same way. And I've enjoyed the years of being with the Manhattans. And, and I have to give thanks and shout out to the late Blue Lovett. He was our bass singer. The late Kenneth Kelly was our tenor. Uh, the late Edward Bivens, Sonny Bivens, was our first tenor. The late Richard Taylor, who was our baritone. And also to uh, uh, another very important gentleman that stood in for Smitty when I joined the group. Um, his name was Philip Flood, and uh, Philip was awesome. And he, today we still con in contact, and we talk to each other and see each other from time to time. But it's been a wonderful journey, and um, I'm just thankful to God that he's continuing us, giving me the strength to continue with, with Troy and and uh, Weez and the uh, East Coast Connection, Scotty and Edna, and all to continue this legacy and carry it forward. Thank you so much for your service here and putting and keeping the Manhattans alive. I thank you so much because you have a distinctive voice as well. Thank you. Yes, it's um, it's a blessing. That's all I can say. It's just it's it's a wonderful blessing that God has blessed me with and um, to have a voice and to be able to go out on stage night after night and perform, you know, and sing from my heart. And, you know, when you got, we are family. And we walk on that stage, everybody lift each other up. And these two gentlemen lift me up. 
the band lift us up. Um, Scotty, Edna is a whole family, and and um, we lift each other up. Okay, Mister Deep Voice. <laughs> That's what I, I do. I That's <laughs> what I do. <laughs> I told you it's natural wrong, really. Hey, that, <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with that. In fact, I like it that way. Okay, well, tell a little yeah. bit about yourself. Well, uh, 31 years ago, I was in the New York area trying to get a recording contract. Actually, longer than that. Actually, about maybe four or five years longer than that. And I met Winfred Blue Lovett. He was retired at the time, but he was very much into trying to help other artists. You know, he was taking other artists under his wing to try to get them into the recording industry. And I met him, and he did his best he could to try to help me into the industry. And um, one day he came to me and said, we're going back on the road, and uh, would you be willing to sing along with us for a couple of weeks? You know, and here it is 31 years later. So, <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. I'm telling you what, thank you so much. I'm grateful to be here. Thank you for having us. Wait a minute. Before we go on, mm -hmm. the voice. Uh -huh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Did it take you a long time to get used to that voice? Or yeah, did it yes, come? it did. Okay. okay. <laughs> it did. It did. But I realized, um, you know, before uh, Blue passed away, he told us to do everything you can to maintain this legacy. Take the baton, continue to move it forward. So I, we tried a few other artists in that role, but eventually Gerald came to me and said, Troy, you know what? You do it. And that's how I got to be doing what I'm doing now. Has anybody ever told you your your voice sounds like a radio voice? I've heard that quite a bit, yeah. Well, you know podcasting is now, you know, it's it's popular, so. I've had several people uh, trying to push me in that direction, and I've uh, I've hosted a show in Maryland for a little while, uh, but I just never really continued on with it, so. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll consider that. Okay, and, you know. Yeah. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Oh, yeah. Keep uh, pushing, Candy. I okay, can I definitely right will. Yeah. Candy show. And I, yeah, okay, well, thank you so much because I can definitely help you too, you know. All right. I'll do something. <laughs> okay, Mr. In the Glasses, thank you so much with the blue on. Mr. Newbie, tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Well, um, you know, I was wandering around, you know, just sweeping up behind the group and stuff and. They said, well, you, you look like you might be able to do something. Do you think you No, I'm only kidding. Uh, I've been a singer for most of my life. I'm, I'm not as old as Gerald, but um, <laughs> I started singing professionally at 15. Uh, I was going to a theater, because I'm native of Philadelphia. I started going to Philly. Uh, the place is called the Uptown Theater. It's like the Apollo in New York. And I would go and watch the groups and stuff. The Manhattans was one of the groups, and I, th I never had the, you know, I never had the audacity to think I could sing professionally. So, but what happened was my oldest brother had a singing group. They got drafted for for the Vietnam War, and I was the only one left of the group. I was too young for the draft, so I stayed in the group. I stayed in the group, and I just basically sang. It was a self-contained group at the time, and I mostly did '70s funk stuff at that time because I was a teenager. So. As it went on, then I started to just, you know, sing with, you know, other folks. Patti LaBelle is from Philadelphia. I had an audition from Patti LaBelle. I got the gig. I did some stuff with, um, oh, God. It's too many people. It's a lot of folks. I work with a lot of people. I did commercials, the jingles, the whole nine, you know. Um, and then I wound up with the, the Philly connection is Gerald's wife, Edna, is from Philly. So she called me up, you know, and said that she needed money for me to get Gerald out of jail. And uh, <laughs> I don't even know if we were supposed to be telling that one. Shoot. No, I'm just kidding. No, so we were talking, and we were on a show together. We were on the cruise. And I was backstage. No, I was at the board, the soundboard, with Edna watching the show. And what happened was they were trying to find a replacement for the other guy from Philly, Dave Tyson, who was the other tenor. And I was there watching the show with her, and she just <laughs> they had somebody that was they were trying to work out. And I was sitting there with her, and she was complaining. And I, I just, you know, I offered my two cents. So a little while later, Edna called me on the phone. Gerald was in the background saying, no, I don't want him because he's too black. But <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> These are jokes. <laughs> so 
long story short, I came, I did the uh, rehearsals. Uh, thank God I didn't have the audition, because if I had the audition, you know, I hate auditions. So I, I wouldn't have, you know. They asked me to do the, uh, I got an audition, as a matter of fact, for The Voice. Yeah. yeah. You talking about cussing? I cussed them people out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I said, you ain't qualified to judge me. You couldn't carry my wet clothes, and you, I don't even know what you are. <laughs> well, and now you are here and as a member of, of the legendary Manhattans. No. Oh, my. I'm not, I don't have it. I don't have, I don't have that kind of filter. So, oh. anyways, <laughs> but I'm here now. Well, thank you so much. I'm just trying to do my part. Well, I know you guys, uh, I know you are getting ready to do your sound check. So, there's just a few more questions I want to make sure that we get out here. Tell us a little bit about the show. When we come and we patronize a Manhattan show with featuring Gerald Alston, besides, let's just get and sing goodbye. I mean, I try to sing. I mean, I don't know. But tell me a little bit about what anybody can expect. Go ahead, sing it, sing it. Well, we're going to just go back in time. We played here in Indianapolis many, many years ago. Excuse me for this. Um, and one of our biggest songs was One Life to Live, which we recorded back. It was one of the first songs I recorded with the group. So we'll probably do that, and we're going to go back and do all of our hits. There's No Me Without You, We Never Dance to a Love Song, Kiss and Say Goodbye, Shining Star, Hurt, All the Way Down the Line. Crazy. Uh, okay, I know we can expect some good uh, choreography, the dancing. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. you know, I told you guys I used to dance, so I'm, I'm going to be definitely looking out for that. Um, it's it's a love making session. To oh be yeah. honest with you, that's exactly. We what love we what we do. We love performing for the audience. We hope the audience loves to see us. <laughs> it's nothing but love. We we're, we're making love. All that's about what we're love. Doing. Yeah. I mean, kiss and say goodbye is the smoothest breakup song I have ever heard. <laughs> it's still is to this day, right? Yes, yeah. it is. Yes, it is. All right, a couple of more questions, guys. Now I <laughs> I have to take it back. Reasons. Tell me a little bit about reasons, cause I'm, I'm, but wait, it's wait a minute. Which version of reasons? Because I understand that you had a couple of members of Earth, Wind, and Fire who wrote that song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about how reasons came about and how did they end up getting the song and singing it? Well, actually, we recorded that after them. That was given. That was a suggestion by the late Mickey Eichner. He was the Vice President over at Columbia Records, and a Vice President of our Rhythm and Blues Department. And he suggested that we do that song. And um, Bert DiCato did the production of it. And it came out pretty good. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. It's like their reason is completely different than your reason. It's a different demographic. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, it's the same audience, but at the same time, you have a little jazzier feel to a little bit of more love. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, I think uh, Bert did a wonderful job at arranging and producing that because he made it for the Manhattans. It it, it fit the Manhattans, and it was our style, our uh, genre, everything about us was put into that song. You guys all write your songs. I know you're a songwriter. You're a songwriter? Mm -hmm. You're a songwriter? Okay. All right. Okay. Now, I have to say, the history of the Manhattan song, they all been loving, or, or the smooth, I want you back, baby. But there was one song, and I paid attention. You don't have any curse words in your songs. So, no curse, you know. Songs can be clean, and they can still be hits. But there was one song, one song that had a curse word in it. And it was about the woman cheating on the man. Let me see. Let me see. Mm. I know there's an X-rated version of mm -hmm. Kiss and Say Goodbye. That's okay. where I thought she was going with it. I think that's what she was talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, well, we, there was a curse words. Yeah, curse words. We did that... Um, we did an X-rated version of Kiss and Say Goodbye. Actually, just the rap portion that Blue did. And we did it as uh, 
so have fun. Send it to all the DJs and the program directors at that time. Um, as a you know, a little joke for them to have fun by. And it it worked. Except we played um we performed in Boston at the Sugar Shack many years ago. And the DJ the the DJ at the club also was on the radio station there in Boston. And he would go on the air after we finished at the club. So he went on the air and he thought he had the right kiss and say goodbye. <laughs> And when he put it on, his board lit up. And uh, the program director called him, and he stepped away from the board. Mm. But he was, able to, he was able to stop it before it got. He wasn't that far, and he couldn't grab it and start it again. But it was hilarious. Well, I know I would definitely love to continue this. Again, I know we are limited on time because you guys got to get yourselves ready for sound check and get ready for tonight's event. Um, Mr. Gerald Austin, tell everyone how they can follow you so they know what your up and coming shows are or whoever, whoever likes to tell that or if there's anything else. extra. Well, he, he might beat me to the punch, but before he says that, we have a new CD out. Yeah. Come on. Tell it's him. Called the Manhattans featuring the one and only Gerald Austin, The Legacy Continues. And it's a single on there that went number one on the Indie Soul charts and it stayed up there for several weeks. We'll perform that tonight. Oh, yes. It's called What About You? What About Me? Yeah, it was written by Troy, myself, and our keyboard player, Colt Younger. Um, and, and very beautiful song. Very beautiful song. Where can they find it? You could. It's on all the digital platforms, mm -hmm. and if you actually want the physical copy, you could go to our website. Let's just kiss and say goodbye dot com, mm -hmm. and you can order purchase it from there, or you can go to CD Baby and get the physical CD. And if you want an autograph, we'll autograph it and send it back to you. And we're also on Instagram. Uh, the Manhattans featuring, it's actually the Manhattans, I think it's underscore FGA, mm -hmm. and uh, our uh, Facebook is the same thing, the Manhattans FGA. Okay. So one thing real quick, very quick, tell me what is the success behind the Manhattans featuring Gerald Austin? Each one, your perspective. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's it's family, and I think <coughs> we re we respect each other in a way, um, and and treat each other in a way that everybody want to be here, you know. And we are, and one the most important thing is that we're all reaching for the same goal for success and continuing this legacy. And we, all of us, love the musicians, love what they're doing. The, the singers, all three of us love what we're doing, you know. And when we get on that stage, it's just, it's the perfect formula. We all love it. That's the most important part. Mr. Bass. I'll say uh, the longevity of the Manhattans is based on songs, not tunes. Uh, a tune will last a few days, maybe, a few weeks, maybe, or maybe a few months. But a good song will last forever. You can put on Kiss and Say Goodbye today and still relate and still feel it. We get on that stage and we sing Kiss and Say Goodbye. People in the audience, several of them, you'll see them crying as if whatever happened in their lives just happened. So that's a good song. And that's what maintains the longevity of the Manhattans. That, from my perspective. Yeah, I, well, for me, it's the uh, participation. This is a... Um, legacy situation and specifically about true R&B organic R&B not this is real R&B and it's true so all you have to do is come to it with humility and just sing the song just sing the song before we get out here I want to make sure you guys know so I spoke to you a couple of days ago right do you know, literally my sister, it was my birthday a couple of days ago. So my sister and I went to a restaurant. We went to a Mexican restaurant. 
I'm listening. I was like, shut up. He is singing, let's, you know, kiss, kiss and say goodbye. But it didn't sound very familiar. And I was like, wait a minute. Then I heard, dun, 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 dun. I was like, no, this is, I said, hold on. When we're off the air, I'm going to let you listen to it. This shows, and by the way, he sung in Spanish. So this shows how global the Manhattans featuring Gerald Austin is. And I wouldn't have never thought that I would have heard that song on that day that I just spoke to you, knowing that I'm about to have this interview. I, you know what? That was nothing but God. That's right. That's right. Mm. You know, we've had the opportunity to do a world tour, and, and every place that we perform, we left um, indelible mark of who we are, you know, uh, South Africa, um, South America down in Rio and yep. Sao Paulo, you know, Japan, Japan yeah. you know, and, and back in the day when we did Europe, we used to uh, do a lot of performing in Germany and Amsterdam, you know, um, and they people remembered, and it's because of the songs that we sing and our humbleness to our fans. We take time to spend time with our fans. We sign autographs. Mm -hmm. We talk to them. We take pictures with them. We're never uh, too big to take a moment for them. It's always about the fans because they're who make us who we are. And um, is one other thing I forgot when I was giving the child out. I have to give it. Um, we have great sound technicians. Uh, Andre DeBorg is front house sound and Tom Sells is our monitors. Um, and I, I it left them out and giving shout outs and, con you know, part of our family. And they are part of our family. They are a main part of the family, yeah. you know. I always tell people, understand this, that they, you have what you do on stage, but it is a team mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. behind the camera, behind the stage. It is a yeah. team effort. Oh, yes. Was there anything else you guys want to say before you get out of here? Well, our band, East Coast Connection, we definitely want to give them a shout. Yes. And this one gentleman that without him, I don't know where we'd be. Our road manager, Mr. Jeffrey Scott. He is yep. the best yes. mm -hmm. in the business. Yes. Any last words? Ditto. Okay. <laughs> well, once again, thank you so much. I'm very honored that you guys are allowing me to be in your presence, taking your precious, sweet, valuable time. Today. We're honored that you had us here. Well, thank you so much. And well, also, mm -hmm. shout out to Andre Pittman. Yes, thank you so much. You, you know what? Guess what? Yes. I'm, I'm going to tell you what. He was actually going to be the last person I was going to go. <laughs> but you go ahead and do that because Andre is the one who really got us set up. Go ahead. Yes, Andre has been in the Manhattan's Corner over the past few years. Anything we needed, anything he could do to help us, he's always been there. And... Um, I also got a, received a, an award from Enthone. Um, and and I'm very honored and, and thankful to Andre. Thank you so much. Thank you again to Mr. Andre Pittman. I appreciate you from Enthone Entertainment. Guys, I know these gentlemen got to get out of here. So you know the deal. Candy Productions 2, capital C, number 2. That is the YouTube page. And also Instagram is Candy Talk Show. So, guys, thank you so much. Stay tuned for the next episode. And we're out. Bye.